Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Bluster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. <laughs> Once again, for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks, under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, the weather's been pretty nice around Madison High School, where Our Miss Brooks teaches English. That is, up until last week. Then the gray clouds cascaded moisture, and the streets danced to the tune of Mother Nature's tears. It was as though some celestial goblet had overturned, caressing the earth with rivulets of heavenly champagne. Or, as we say in my neighborhood... It was wetter than a drowned seal's mustache. <laughs> the rain started Friday morning, and while I was at breakfast with my landlady, she made a piercingly accurate observation. It's certainly coming down, isn't it? <laughs> it sure is, Mrs. Davis. Great weather for ducks. I'll bet the farmers are glad, though. Yeah, it should be good for the crops. It'll keep the dust down, too. It isn't the heat, it's the humidity Now how did that get in there? Would you like another cup of coffee, Connie? No, thanks, I have to get ready for school Walter Denton's picking me up Oh, is your car in the shop again? No, but I wouldn't dare drive in this wet weather With my tires in such poor condition What's wrong with your tires? I only have three <laughs> Oh, that's Walter now I'll just be a minute Walter Will you help me into my rain clothes, Mrs. Davis? Certainly, dear Here's your yellow slicker Right on this chair Thanks there. And your nice yellow rain hat Now, you're all set How do I look, Mrs. Davis? Simply divine, Connie You look just like the trademark On a bottle of cod liver oil <laughs> Well, don't stand there. Throw a halibut over my shoulder. And I'll... <laughs> I'm coming, Walter. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Davis. Goodbye, Connie. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Walter. What do you think of this weather? Boy, it's certainly coming down. <laughs> it sure is, Walter. Great weather for ducks. I bet the farmers are glad, though. Yeah, it should be good for the crops. It'll keep the dust down, too. <laughs> well, there goes all our dialogue for the trip to school. <laughs> now, if you'll help me open this car door, I'll... Walter, where's the top to your car? In my garage. I always take it down in weather like this. You do? Yes, ma'am. It leaks. <laughs> oh, well, that explains it. We wouldn't want to ride with a leaky top. <laughs> Might get the rain all wet. <laughs> Get in, Miss Brooks. I've got this Turkish towel to throw over our heads. Why spoil it? There's nothing like driving in an open convertible and listening to the pitter-patter of raindrops on your nose. <laughs> the towel isn't just for us, Miss Brooks. I've got to protect my electrical shop homework. Here, uh, hold it, will you? I don't want to seem nosy, Walter, but what is this contraption? It's got wires and tubes all over it. Well, that's my homework, Miss Brooks. What are you studying? Frankenstein 1? <laughs> no, that's my project for a shop. It's an SCR shortwave radio receiver. A radio receiver? Where'd you get it? I built it. That was my project. The electrical shop furnished most of the materials, and I did the rest. Oh, that's wonderful. You kids who are going to school nowadays are certainly fortunate. Just think of it. Building your own radios. When I went to school, all I built was an inferiority complex. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't so tough. Of course, I had to solder a lot of wires in back there, but it turned out pretty good. What's this thing that's sticking out between the tubes that looks like a banana? It's a banana. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Miss Brooks, I put my lunch in there to keep it dry. I wish I could get in there. This Turkish towel is getting to be a Turkish bath. Why are you stopping, Walter? I promised to pick up Harriet Conklin this morning, too. Look, there's our beloved principal standing next to the house. Good morning, Mr. Conklin. How do you like the rain? I loathe it, Denton. Thank you. <laughs> What's wrong with a little rain? Every time it rains, all manner of weird creatures are washed from their natural habitat under stones 
and come slithering into my driveway. <laughs> and good morning to you, Mr. Conklin. Oh, oh, Miss Brooks. Oh, for a moment there, I thought Denton had picked up a hitchhiking halibut fisherman. <laughs> My daughter will be out in a moment, young man. Meanwhile, please remove that junk heap from my driveway. I'm expecting a furniture van at any moment. Oh, what kind of furniture are you getting, Mr. Conklin? It's custom-built Malacca bamboo. At long last, I'm realizing a dream of mine, to furnish our little glassed-in sleeping porch as a sort of tropical lanai, a place to which I can retreat from the rigors of my daily routine. No, I think bamboo furniture is kind of icky myself. <laughs> oh, you do. <laughs> and uh, what is your opinion of it, Miss Brooks? Well, sir, I... I'm asking your opinion, Miss Brooks. What do you think of bamboo furniture? Well, personally, I'm not too crazy about it. When I want your opinion, I'll ask. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Brooks. Hello, Harriet. Come on, get in. So long, Daddy. Be sure they get the furniture in out of the rain. I will, Harriet. Just to know it's coming makes me feel good all over. My own Shangri-La. Aloha, one and all. Valley high and gesundheit. <laughs> Would you do me a favor, Miss Brooks? I don't have shop class till the afternoon, and I have biology this morning, so would you mind parking this radio in Mr. Boynton's lab for me? But why should I go into Mr. Boynton's lab? Well, because you've got ten minutes before your class starts, and you always manage to sneak in. All right, Walter. <laughs> I'll do it for you as a favor. Uh, thanks, Miss Brooks. Here it is. Now, be careful of it now. I'll see you later. Goodbye, Walter. <clears throat> Hello, Mr. Boynton. May I leave this radio for Walter Denton? It's his shop homework. Oh, certainly, Miss Brooks. Just, just put it down on that table. Thanks. He'll pick it up next period. There. Say, that's quite a rain costume you've got on. Oh, do you like it? Yes, indeed. It's just the kind I want. I I'll bet it makes a wonderful outfit for halibut fishing. <laughs> There's no use talking. I'll have to burn it. I hope I'm not keeping you from any work, Mr. Boynton. Well, I... Good. <laughs> then we can chat for a few minutes. Oh, very well, Miss Brooks. Let's do that. All right. Okay. Well, if it's checked around to me, I'll have to open. <laughs> Where do you stand on rain, Mr. Boynton? Rain? Well, well, by and large, I'd say that rain is quite beneficial to most forms of plant life. You'll never be investigated for that remark. <laughs> but what I meant was... Don't you think it's rather early in the year for such a cold, driving rain? Oh, not at all, Miss Brooks. Our climatic conditions are undergoing a slow but steady change. It's something of a meteorological phenomenon, but do you realize that at this very moment the equatorial belt is slipping slowly southward? Well, I'll turn my back. You tighten it up. <laughs> What I'm trying to say is that the warm weather which we in the temperate zone have long enjoyed is moving further south every year. It's entirely possible that in the future our area may be engulfed in icy Arctic weather. How far in the future? Oh, possibly 10,000 years. Good, I should be finished knitting my mittens by then. <laughs> Unless I drop a stitch or two. Come in. Excuse me, Mr. Boynton, but I've got a message from Miss Brooks. How did you happen to look for me here, Harriet? You're kidding, of course. <laughs> Daddy just called and said he'd be delayed with the furniture a while longer and asked me to monitor your class while you sit in his office till he gets here. Well, congratulations, Miss Brooks. What'd I do? Well, this makes you acting principal of Madison. Well, that's right, Miss Brooks. I guess Daddy didn't realize what he was doing. I mean... <laughs> well, all you have to do is answer some phone calls. If you'll excuse me, I've got to stop in at the supply room for a moment. That is, with your permission, Miss Acting Principal. Granted. I'll just be a few minutes. See you later. Isn't this Walter's radio, Miss Brooks? Yes, it is. It's a complicated-looking thing. Let's see if it works. It's pretty close to our first class, Harriet. Listen. Oh, this is swell reception. What do you know, Guy Lombardo? <laughs> Keen arrangement, isn't it? And now, 
ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a special weather bulletin. Oh, good. Maybe the rain's going to stop. Attention, everyone. This is an important announcement. Local weather authorities have just notified us that the barometer is falling rapidly, and a hurricane is approaching from the southwest. Miss Brooks, did you hear that? A hurricane! Reports indicate that winds measuring up to 150 miles per hour will strike this area within the hour. Please do not become panicky, but go immediately to places of safety. Mr. Boynton said our climate was changing, but this is ridiculous. Industries will secure all machinery in their plants, and schools will shut down at once. Did you hear that, Miss Brooks? Of course I heard it. I'm listening louder than you are. I repeat. <laughs> well, this are you going to shut down the school? I have no authority to do anything like that. Why, well, of course you have. You're acting principal, aren't you? But you know your father. He'll be furious if I take such a drastic step. I'd better call him. Well, there's no time for that now. Everyone's in great danger. Well, then we'd better ask Mr. Boynton's advice. Come on, Harriet. Mr. Boynton! Mr. Boynton! We will stay on the air and bring you further reports and advice as the hurricane approaches. This is Dudley Hetherington speaking to you from station VUM, situated in the heart of downtown Bombay, India. <laughs> Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. More than two years' research showed the Colgate way of brushing teeth right after eating helps stop more decay for more people than ever before reported in dentifrice history. Yes, the Colgate way stops tooth decay best, better than any other home method of oral hygiene. No other toothpaste or powder, ammoniated or not, has proof of such results. And you should know that Colgate's, while not mentioned by name, was the only toothpaste used in the research on tooth decay recently reported in Reader's Digest. Yes, Colgate Dental Cream, and only Colgate Dental Cream, was used in this research. So always use Colgate's to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. And when you follow the Colgate way, Colgate Dental Cream stops tooth decay best. Brush your teeth with Colgate's. Colgate Dental Cream, it cleans your breath. What a toothpaste, what a cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. Well, when Mr. Conklin put Miss Brooks in temporary charge of Madison High School, he had no idea what a crisis would arise in his absence. Not knowing it's from Bombay, Miss Brooks is taking the hurricane report she heard on Walter Denton's radio quite seriously. Hiya, Miss Brooks. Did you put my radio in the biology lab? Yes, I did, Walter. I also turned it on and heard a report from the local weather authorities that's got me in the tizzy. And I don't tiz easily. <laughs> so what is it? More rain coming? Oh, it's worse than that. There's a 150-mile hurricane approaching from the southwest. Well, blow me down. It will if we don't get out of here. <laughs> I sent Harriet into her father's office to call him up at home, and I'm trying to locate Mr. Boynton. Uh, maybe I can help you. Maybe you can. And when you find him, tell him about the hurricane and bring him to the principal's office at once. <laughs> No use, Miss Brooks. Our phone at home is still busy. I guess your mother's doing her shopping on the phone on account of the rain. No. Mother's spending the day with Aunt Bertha. Mother's her favorite sister, you know. And Mother's crazy about Aunt Bertha, too. I guess it's because she was an only child. Your mother's sister was an only child, Gracie? A uh, Harriet? <laughs> yes, ma'am. She was the only child until Mother was born. <laughs> We haven't much more time, Miss Brooks. The radio says... Here he is, Miss Brooks. So what's all this about a hurricane? It's true, Mr. Boynton. It came over the radio. I heard it, too. The man said it was due to strike this vicinity in an hour. What man said that, Harriet? The announcer. Well, how do you know he meant this vicinity? It's very simple, Mr. Boynton. He said he was quoting local weather authorities. Now, if I'm responsible for the students in this school, I'd better see that they all reach their homes before the storm hits. You mean you're closing the school? Hot dog! <laughs> 
Miss Brooks, you can't do that. She's got to. Well, this is a very radical step to take. I don't know if I agree with such a procedure. You seem to forget, Mr. Boynton. I'm acting principal of this institution. Oh, my, my apologies, Miss Brooks. You're absolutely right. As principal, your authority exceeds mine in this matter. I await your command. <laughs> At ease. <laughs> Smoke if you like. <laughs> Walter, you tell the other teachers to dismiss their classes in an orderly fashion and caution them of the approaching storm. Yes, sir, right away. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Please hurry, Walter. You have to drive us over to Daddy's when you come back. We can't reach him by phone, and he's got to be told what's happening. Okay, Harriet. It's kind of exciting, isn't it, Miss Brooks? We'll all go over together and... All but me, Harriet. As acting principal of this great institution, I feel it's my duty to stay right here and go down with the school. <laughs> no, no, no. You're going right with us, Miss Brooks. Well, of course you are. You've got to report to Daddy. We'll lock the house up tight and see that every... Oh, dear. What if the hurricane hits before we get to the house? What'll you do then, Miss Brooks? What can I do? I'll let it blow and lash myself to Mr. Boynton. <laughs> Your dad doesn't mind our barging in on him like this, Harriet. Well, it's an emergency, Mr. Boynton. He'll understand. Come on. He's probably in his lanai. Daddy, I'm home. That's funny. He isn't in here. No, but the new furniture is. Get a load of this bamboo wilderness. <laughs> <laughs> it's an odd-looking room, isn't it? How do you like it, Miss Brooks? Now I know where old fishing poles go when they die. <laughs> I brought my radio along, Miss Brooks. It'll help while away the hours we have to stay holed up here. They care to dance, Harriet? Walter Denton, I'm surprised at you. How can you ask anyone to dance with a hurricane coming any minute? Oh, I'm sorry. It was pretty silly, I guess. It was positively inane. Care to dance, Mr. Boynton? <laughs> You'd better turn that thing off, Walter. I'm going into the next room and see if Daddy's there. That's his den. I don't hear any growling. <laughs> Be sure and tell him we're here, will you, Harriet? I hope he doesn't get angry because Miss Brooks shut down the school. Why should he get angry? I merely did my duty. Come on, let's all go in. No, Harriet, you go in alone. He wouldn't hit a relative. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just be a minute. Hello, Daddy. Harriet, what are you doing home? What's the meaning of this? Now, take it easy, Daddy. Wait till I close this door. Well, this will probably come as something of a shock to Mr. Conklin. I wonder how he'll react to my closing down the school. Let's keep quiet and listen. She shut down the school! <laughs> Miss Brooks! How could you possibly... Now, I'm here, too, Mr. Conklin. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Miss Brooks, how could you possibly do... Hello, Mr. Conklin. Hello. <laughs> Miss Brooks, how could you possibly... Hello, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> how could you shut down my school in the middle of the day? But, sir, there's a hurricane coming. We heard yeah, it on the radio. Right, Mr. Conklin. Harriet told me all about it. There's a hurricane blowing in from... Shut the... up! Southwest. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard such a batch of unmitigated jabberwocky in all my days. How could a hurricane possibly get this far into the United States? Smugglers? <laughs> Don't be impertinent, Miss Brooks. Boynton, you always seem to be a person of average intelligence. How could you allow this, this, this mad woman to shut down my school on a ridiculous assumption? But it isn't an assumption, Mr. Conklin. Miss Brooks heard the warning on the radio. So did I, Daddy. And there's no time to waste if we're to get ready for it. Walter, go close all the windows. Yes, ma'am. Denton, come back here. This happens to be my domain. I'll give the orders here. Yes, sir. Go close all the windows. <laughs> I just don't want the rain to ruin things. Hurricanes, indeed. But, Mr. Conklin, we heard... I don't want to hear any more about it. Too late to call the students back to school, I suppose. But if anything like this ever happens again... Oh, please, I... Daddy. Miss Brooks, turn on the radio. Maybe there's another weather report coming on. That'll convince him. Right, Harriet. Heavy rain squalls and extreme turbulence. All citizens' attention. The following precautionary measures are urged by local authorities for the protection of life and property 
during the approaching hurricane. I said I don't want to hear any more about... Who said that? But the man on the radio, Daddy. Listen. Please follow these emergency measures to the letter. First, precautions against flying glass from wind-shattered windows. Board up all windows. I repeat, board up all windows. Did you hear that? Well, don't stand around like a bunch of dummies. We've got to board up all the windows. <laughs> Luckily, I've got my tool kit handy. I was going to saw some wood for the fireplace. The most secure method of boarding up windows is by using bamboo shoots. <laughs> I repeat, board up your windows with bamboo. Bamboo? Where in the world are we going to get bamboo? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> new furniture. Well, this is an emergency, Mr. Conklin. You, you heard it yourself. But I haven't even had time to sit in it yet. Well, take a fast bounce on that couch and we'll start chopping. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. One moment. Just let me sit down for one moment. That dear little couch. Hands up on your feet, Mr. Conklin. Here's the toolbox, Mr. Boynton. Let's get started. Oh, I hate to do this, sir, but you know the necessity. I'll turn my back. I can't bear to watch it. <laughs> Oh. Would you like a bullet to bite on? <laughs> Good work, Mr. Boynton. You've solved the coffee table right in half. <laughs> Things are bad enough, Miss Brooks. We don't need a commentator. I'll give you a hand with the couch, Mr. Boynton. Pass me the axe. Oh. up the windows, Walter. Gosh, I've been missing all the fun. Hand me that axe and stand aside. <laughs> Never mind that, Walter. Take this bamboo strip I've tacked together and nail it up against that window. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, give me the hammer and a nail, Harriet, please. Here, Walter. <laughs> Judas Priest! <laughs> What was that? Don't look now, Mr. Conklin, but you can pick flowers without opening your window. <laughs> Quiet, everybody. Some more instructions are coming over the air. Be sure to shut off all water pipes and lash down your ox cart. <laughs> <laughs> New cars must be scarcer than we think. Instruction number three. Attention, everyone. Disperse all natives to the hills. <laughs> I repeat, after costing them to tie down the thatched roofs on their straw huts, disperse all natives to the hills. What natives? Good question. <laughs> Before you repair to your storm cellars, be sure to tether your elephants carefully. <laughs> Remember, tether your elephants carefully. Quick, quick, there's not a minute to lose. I've got to get outside and tether my elephant. <laughs> elephant? <laughs> Mr. Boyd, did that man say elephants? <laughs> I thought he did, Mr. Conklin. But who keeps elephants? <laughs> Ever hear of Sabu? <laughs> this concludes our station broadcast until after the hurricane has passed. Good luck to you all from your friendly station, D-U-M, situated in the heart of downtown Bombay, India. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> hey, the joke is certainly on us. We've been worried about a storm that's 5,000 miles away. Oh, can you imagine that? 
5,000 miles. Oh, this is a scream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yes, it's a panic. Imagine closing down an entire high school and wrecking a room full of furniture because of a report on some idiot's homemade radio telling of a hurricane 5,000 miles away! <laughs> blood pressure. Your concern for my blood pressure is touching, Miss Brooks. But I'd rather you concern yourself with what I'm to do about these slivers of bamboo that you've left me with. Please, Mr. Conklin, you can make a fortune with those slivers. A fortune? How? When the flying saucers land, you can clean up selling bamboo canes to those little men. <laughs> in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumas' magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, better than a liquid... Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean. Free of loose dandruff. Glistening with sheen. Soft. Manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight? Yes, tonight, try Luster Cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is Eve Arden. If you are concerned about the threat of communism, you should know this fact. The Crusade for Freedom an organization headed by General Lucius Clay needs your financial and moral assistance in the support of Radio Free Europe. This is a private radio station now working to bring to communist-dominated European countries the voices of their exiled leaders. Help Radio Free Europe by joining the Crusade for Freedom in your town. This is Warren Smith reminding you to tune in next week to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis, with the music of Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, and Dan Tobin. <laughs> Doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Yes, 36 leading skin specialists prove in tests on 1,285 different women that palm olive soap facials, using nothing but palm olive, brought new complexion beauty to two women out of three. Just wash your face three times daily with palm olive soap, each time for 60 seconds, massaging palm olive's beauty lather onto your skin. Then rinse and pat dry. So start your palm olive facials today. Remember, doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Be sure to hear Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday night on this same network. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. Stay tuned now for Jack Benny. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.